Okay, this is the method for reptilian fuckfaces to get sudden enlightenment. Buddhist sudden enlightenment. Mm hmm. You've heard of it. You think it's possible? I don't care if you think it's possible or not. I'm going to show you how to do it. Why? Because I'm the master. <laughs> I am. My name is Bobby Burrows, and I'm going to show you how to drop your um, your ego. And one easy technique. Okay, it's super easy to practice. So this is how it works. Okay, here I am. Okay, here I am. Here, and there's my bed. Okay, so everyone's got a bed, and Everybody's drinking lots of water. It's not vodka. And this is actually grape juice, but um, this is a coffee cup, and I drink a lot of coffee. It's not bad for you. If you saw much coffee I drink, I don't know if someone's going to say it causes your fibromyalgia. No, that's demonic attack. Anyway, um, coffee and cigarettes are what modern-day witches are using. And if you got fibromyalgia, then modern witches are, uh, you know, they're using weed because it helps soften up the muscles. Anyways, uh, if you ditch your ego, does it mean that your body's going to heal? Um, mine hasn't. But we're processing a lot of energy, a lot of old paint, we call it. It's just, that's what it is. It's old energy that's low vibe and sickly. It's called Inner Alchemy, and you can look to somebody like Lori Ladd on YouTube uh, to talk about it. Okay, back to uh, the way to get sudden enlightenment from Bobby Burroughs, courtesy of uh, Matt Kahn. We were inspired by Matt Kahn, K-A-H-N. And uh, so the spirit and Matt Kahn, and the usual cast of idiots that are around me, because there's quite a few spirits that are around me. And we all know this trick. So, you know, you've been drinking water and, you know, then you get sleepy tired. And you lie down, you know, because you're sleepy tired, you know. And then, you know, you get your... You know, you get your blankie. And there I am, all snug as a bug and a rug. And then, okay, I fall to sleep, okay, fast forward, I, oh, this is really good. Oh, so nice just to rest for a minute. Oh, so lovely. Oh, so lovely. Now, whether you fall asleep or not at this point, sooner or later, all that um, liquid that you've been drinking is going to uh, um, come to your attention. Oh dear, I just got here. I got pee. Oh dear, oh god, not this. I was, I, I got, well, you know what you're gonna do. Like, sometimes you're so sleepy tired. It's like, I'm, I'm too sleepy tired. I, I know, okay, I just know. I just know that if I gotta get a, I don't, I don't know, five more minutes. Five more minutes, and it's like, okay, well, you know you have to pee, but, you're not ready yet to get out of bed. You just know, like, for me, it's like, my, I have to wait a long time. After I wake up, after a deep sleep, oh, yeah, it takes a long time. It's like pieces of me are not back here yet. It feels like, you know, it feels like, you know, until I'm fully here in the bed, then, you know, then the body gets going on its own. And that is exactly how you get sudden enlightenment. Because the body, my body, gets up and does what it wants without me telling it what to do. And I did it using sudden enlightenment, the Bobby Burroughs way. So what happens? Okay, so you're lying here and it's five minutes later. Now normally, I don't know, when you, if you waited five minutes and you're like an alarm clock person, you go, okay, five minutes is up, okay, you look at the alarm clock. And my alarm clock's there, you know, there it is. And it's like, oh, God, okay, well, you know, whatever it is. And so you get up out of bed.
And then you go off, trundle off to the bathroom and you uh, have a pee. Okay, so we're just going to go to get sudden enlightenment. We're going to drop that last part. So what we're going to do is we wake. Okay, so we're having our lovely rest. And then we open our eyes and we got to pee. Now remember you said before, previous example, you said, oh, I need a little bit more time, five more minutes. And you didn't get the body up. To go pee so you can do it in other words you already know how to um, delay going pee after you've been given the signal by your bladder and your brain that you're going to need to pee so what we're going to do then is because we're going to delay getting up out of bed how do you do that How do you create a delay in you getting the body out of bed? It's almost automatic, isn't it? You you mean you look at the clock, it's 404, and you say, okay, five more minutes, 409, I'm gonna get this body up. And then what do you do? You relax. Close your eyes and you breathe. You relax, and then, you know, maybe your legs aren't quite right, and then you're relaxed, or whatever. Okay, so now what happens? Okay. Well, just imagine it's 4.09 now, and, okay, what I want you to do is just give yourself another five minutes. And then I want to give yourself another five minutes, and another five minutes. And another five minutes and keep going. Have a look. Keep going. Keep going. I don't know. Two hours? Three hours? Can you do four hours? With the mindset that you are not going to get this body out of bed at all to go pee. You might think I'm going to pee the bed. Yeah. But trust that you've been using your pee muscles for, I don't know how many years you've been since you were born, but you know your pee muscles are pretty good. I don't know. I mean, there's times when I've been in the car and there's been nowhere to stop to go pee. And I'm like dying, you know. Oh my God, my bladder's going to burst. You know, everybody's been through it. So seriously, you can go a long time when it feels very uncomfortable. But, you know, you because I've been out and walk sometime where I had to go so bad, it's like... You come in in the last little bit, like when you see your house, that's when it gets really bad. Because that's when the demonic that watches you says, you know, they start playing with your bladder and making it feel like you're going to pee your pants that last little bit. Yeah, the demonic's been doing that my whole life. Well, we didn't know about these fat controllers. Anyway, so what are you doing? You're just like, you're still five more minutes, five more minutes. Because you are just saying again and again to yourself, I'm not going to move the body. 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 Because what happened when I went through this, it was inspired by a Matt Con talk. And sooner or later, what happened was my body of its own accord got up out of bed and I was right inside of it. It got up on its own and it went to the bathroom. It went for a pee. So, that is you detaching control from your body and then you do it again do it again do it again because well just do it do it every time you lie down on the bed or on a couch do that exercise well i mean i gotta go i gotta be at work at by 8 30 well i don't know do it in the evening Give yourself a break. Just go lie on the couch. And then, when you need to pee, then do it. Don't get up. Don't force the body to get up. Wait for the body to go. Seriously, don't give me these dumb, you know, yabbit, yabbit, yabbit. Either you want to do it or not. Do it. It's easy. 
And then what happens? Well, you do it. Keep doing it every day. Practice every day until it becomes, you know, second nature to you. It's like learning to ride a bike. You got to train your muscle memory. You're training your, um, you know, training your mind memory. And you do it, and you do it, and you do it, and then you're going to say, well, I know, but I got to have control when I'm going to drive to work. Your body drives the car already. It's muscle memory and mind memory that drives the car. That's why we always say, well, we, you know, you do, I don't know. I know, but it's true. Because many times you went, you know, you were out for a drive and you get home and then you don't, did you really remember what you did when you drove home? You got to think about it for a minute. Because your body knows this is the way home. I mean, you drive to uh, Walmart, I don't know, three times a week. Your body knows. You're going to Walmart, your body knows where to go. So, so all you're doing is you're, you will find out that that is true. That your body does do the driving. It's it's just, it's you. Isn't it? Your body is you, but it's different than your mind. And your mind is a tyrant. Because it's a monkey mind. It always has its own wants and needs, and it, it enslaves the body to do what the mind wants you to do. But when you let go uh, with your monkey mind, your ego mind, this is the ego mind that Eckhart Tolle talks about in the Power of Now book. The ego, he's on YouTube, Eckhart Tolle, T-O-L-L-E. You do this P thing, and you keep doing it, and you'll find out that pretty soon you have fully let go of the body all day long. And then it might come, I don't know, I I don't, let's see, I don't know when they're going to say, two weeks. Two weeks of you doing this, and then you're going to find out that you can't get control of the body again. Because once you've let go of it, and you've really let go of it, then your ability to control the body has been, uh, I don't know, taken away. What do you do? Well, you become an angel. This was what Matt Kahn's lecture was. It was called Ending the Inner Conflict. And that's what he said. He said, we are in training to become angels, and we're going to first start training to become an angel by becoming an angel to our body. We call this body break. In Canada, I don't know, they used to have these you know, exercise commercials on TV and it was called Body Break. So your body, give it a name. My Body Break. This one here, this is my body. This is my body. And me being an angel to the body is I'm here to help it, but not be it anymore. Because that's what you do. When you let go of control, then you have... You become an angelic. Because before you were pretty much demonic. Yep. Because you had enslaved this body. You didn't even know. Until you do this trick and you actually find out that you were telling the body what to do. And clearly, you know, do you like being told what to do when you're running the body? No. You want to do it your way. Well, when you let go of control, then you become what's known as the silent witness. And that is an advanced state of consciousness. And you want to evolve as consciousness? Evolve while you're still here. So, read Matt Kahn. K-A-H-N. Listen to some of his videos. He's, I don't know. See what you'll get. That's what I was inspired to get from Matt Kahn. So, thank you, Matt Kahn. So once you become an angel, because this is what he was saying, you become an angel to your body. Uh, That's a great lecture, the inner conflict. And then once you let go, then you're in higher consciousness, and so you become more, you become 5D. You become the fifth dimensional person. 
And then you get to behold what happens. And in this transition time, when you're among the first people to become 5D, uh, is it easy? No, it's tough as nails. You become a spiritual warrior. If you've never thought about it before, you can read up on being a spiritual warrior. Because, because you're going to, I don't know, maybe later on when everybody wakes up, it won't be so tough right now is when mandatory jabs and things in my body, I let go of control and my body doesn't go and get jabbed. No, it doesn't. I don't know. Once you let go of control of the body, then, you know, you might find out that the things you start saying with your voice are coming from your soul instead of you as an ego. And the decisions that your body mind used to make are yet more and more, um, uh, it becomes your soul coming through. And then your soul mission appears because your soul goes on its mission because it's in service. You mean you're here on, in service to um, Earth Ascension, bringing Earth into, from the 3D into the 5D world. That's your job. That's what you signed up for. That's why you incarnated. Ask Dolores Cannon, for example, um, on YouTube, Dolores Cannon, Three Waves of Volunteers. Starseeds. I mean, we had the song, Our Lady Peace, a long time ago, Starseed. That's what we are. We're starseeds, and we're here to change planet Earth in this generation, in this lifetime. Let's get her done. Well, we're looking seven generations in the future, and we don't want this disaster to continue. So we have to be the change we want to see in the world. And so if we want to be angels, angelics, then we got to start being angelics by stop enslaving the body. Now that you know, that's the only way that you evolve. You've got to evolve on the higher in the scale of human consciousness. David R. Hawkins of Consciousness Research in one diagram labeled uh, angels uh, begin at 600 on the scale of human consciousness. That's also called peace. I am peace is the affirmation. I'm putting it into my green chakra, my heart chakra. And my heart chakra is going to lead and the mind uh, becomes the servant automatically. You don't have to try and make the mind a servant. And like, should I go with my head or my heart? You don't do that anymore. Once you let go of control of outcomes, I am the truth. The I am affirmations that you can find from the Ascended Master, Sananda, for example, Saint Germain. Do those things. Do those things right now while you still can because you don't want to have garbage in your heart chakra. I am the resurrection and the life. That's a Jesus one. Get them in your heart chakra and then your mind looks to see where your heart seems to be going in maybe an egoic way and then the mind becomes like the watchdog because it's looking for like the heart go not acting heart like because the, the mind chakra it knows what the heart chakra is supposed to do it's not stupid and that's what its job is to watch for when this thing might be under demonic attack and because when you raise your frequency to 600 i've been under demonic attack every day for five years do you still want to do this exercise i sorry ascended master sananda told me uh, through a channel I don't know, it was more than 20 years ago, that it is harvest time. It is earth ascension. If you don't want to believe me, there's the two Aaron's on YouTube and Instagram. Aaron Doughty and Aaron Abke. Two young spiritual teachers that are totally in alignment with what I'm telling you. So, you now have your mission, Jason Bourne, and it's time for you to take on... The new identity of I am. And then keep up your practice. And very soon you will find out that, you know, this technique 
brings you into uh, brings you into peace. It's like I don't know. Technically, Doctor Hawkins always said seven hundred is uh, enlightened states of consciousness, but I don't know. Uh, Six hundred. Uh, Brent Beeson, the devil, says he thinks it's called transfiguration. I don't know. It's like a major change in consciousness. You're becoming an angel when you decide to be an angel. Start today.